But yeah, I think I think we have Dosu on the agenda and Devin's also here. Uh, I'll just drop the agenda top chat. Uh if you know Daniel, do you take notes or like do you want to take notes? Sure. Uh I, I can do notes. Uh Devin, the floor is yours. You can get started. Cool. Um, I guess hi everyone. Uh, I'm Devin Stein. Uh, yeah, I guess the founder of Dosu, but also um, maintainer of a few open source projects, including SOPS, which is a CNCF sandbox project. So, um, you know, I guess backstory. So I've been working on Dosu for about a year. Um, we're now a team of eight people. Um, and it was started, um, kind of like the idea for Dosu came from my experience, both as an open source maintainer, um, and as just an engineer, um, where I felt that a lot of my value as a maintainer and as an engineer came from like my knowledge of not only like being really familiar with the code base that people were using or trying to contribute to, um, but also code changes. Um, and like previously asked questions, known issues, workarounds. Um, and uh, I felt like now with LLMs, you know, there's a lot of excitement about their ability to generate code. Um, but uh, like, you know, I don't think there's less people focus on all the other work that you have to do as an engineer that requires just an understanding and like memory of code and code changes. Um, and so that's the type of problems that we've been really excited about. Um, at Dosu and trying to solve. Um, and yeah, we've been working really closely with CNCF uh, to make Dosu available for all CNCF projects, um, kind of like a very high free usage limit. Um, and we've seen pretty good adoption. Uh, we have a dedicated uh, Dosu Slack channel on the CNCF. Um, if you are curious, you should join uh, for like announcements. Um, and yeah, any anything else on context? And then I can just jump into a demo. Let me I think, I think, yeah. yeah, yeah, the demo would be great. Let me share my screen. Um, so I'm gonna quickly, I'll guess I'll go to, um, I can go and show an example of what Dosu looks like kind of from the user side and then go kind of like, what does it look like for a maintainer to set it up? So if I jump here, um, the things like Dosu could be used and configured in a number of ways. The things that we do very concretely is help with auto labeling. So auto labeling issues um, uh, and uh, issue deduplication. So commenting related issues or discussions on uh, you know new incoming issues. Um, and then if you want, also auto replies. So helping actually try uh, workshop the issue um, with the user while you know maintainer isn't available. Um, and so here's an example. You know, like very. Uh, I think this is a container. D and um, you know, just an example of Dosu helping keeping a project organized. Super simple, um, but you know, something that goes a long way in terms of keeping your project organized and searchable. Um, CNCF really loves it because it helps them with like reporting as well. Um, it's for projects to have good labels. Um, and yeah, um, we found like it's kind of an easy way for maintainers to adopt Dosu and can be really effective and just helping kind of. Um, yeah, keep a backlog organized. This works on both issues and pull requests. How the auto labeling works is it uses the concepts of the issue as well as previous issues. So, um, you know, the one fun thing on the other labeling side is Dosu will learn uh, your kind of labeling preferences for your organization as you use it more. That's on the auto labeling side. And then here's an example of uh, Dosu responding to discussion. Um, in Jaeger, um, here, you know, someone's asking about a certain behavior um, and something that we try to do at Dosu, like we try to approach kind of problems similar to how an engineer would, which is that we want to treat code as like a source of truth. So, you know, Dosu has a, a, a bunch of data sources available to it. It has, you know, all issues, all discussions, PRs, and code. And then any additional data sources that you attach to it, like documentation. 
Um, but code is like, you know, source of truth for how things actually work. And so here's a really good example of someone asking, like, trying to understand, um, uh, you know, like certain edge case. Uh, and then Dosu is able to actually find that there's a test already for this edge case, surface it to the user um, for context, um, and then give it, you know, user follows up and give it more context as well. Um, so, yeah, I guess this is highlighting kind of the, the power of like using code as a source of truth for things that might not be documented. Any questions on this yeah, before I jump yeah. into kind of the app side? Yeah, please. Yeah, so, so one quick question is, uh, so this is very impressive uh, for say Kubernetes project or projects that fall in the Kubernetes umbrella. We use mm -hmm. Prow, which is, and Prow has labels to kind of label and things yeah. like that. So this, this is pretty neat. But my only question was, uh, so what happens when there's like a false positive or a false negative? Um, how, like, are you going to cover it in the maintainer side of things up? You can just pop that question for later as well. Yeah, it's a really good question. So on the Prow side, um, a lot of the inspiration for um, Dosu is like, uh, actually came from Prow in that, you know, like the Kubernetes ecosystem and other really mature projects have like sophisticated bot for, for labeling, assigning people to issues. Um, and we wanted to make it easier for other projects to adopt the same types of best practices. So um, you see, like when I, I'll jump into the app, we have some of the same Prow auto labeling features around like sizing labels, looks good to me labels, um, the things that Prow already does, but other projects that maybe haven't adopted Prow, um, and Dose makes it easy for it to adopt those types of things. So um, it can be a mix and match with Prow, but some of the things we do is like try to borrow from the best bots in the open source and then make it available to Dosu. On the kind of false um, positive side of things, uh, for incorrect answers, uh, something like that is very top of mind for us and for maintainers. Typically, there's a few things. So one, we try for, especially for auto reply, so there's, I'll get into the app, but there's a few different ways to um, for Dosu to respond. This is kind of like you are fully bought in and you want Dosu to just auto reply to issues or questions or bugs that it thinks it can be helpful on. Um, but we also give maintainers more fine grained control where they can either have Dosu only be mentioned when they think it's going to be relevant. Um, so people have to explicitly summon it uh, with kind of the app Dosu um, mention. And then also you can do um, what I'll show you in the app, um, what we call previews. Um, and soon this will be like rebranded a bit, but basically like it's a main maintainer in the loop mode um, where maintainers can see example responses before they go out to users. Um, and then um, what's coming soon is the ability to actually like maybe edit the message slightly and then publish it. Um, and so that way uh, people have been really excited about that because it's an explicit way to get a dose of feedback and make sure the bot's getting better for your project. Um, but also it's like an easy way to introduce um, the bot where you know the responses are good because you're reviewing them. So. Thanks for that. That explains it. Of course. Uh, really good questions. And so, yeah, so just jumping into the app. So if you go to, you know, app.dosu.dev to sign in, you'll end up on a dashboard like this. Um, here, you know, we just have some high level stats, you know, messages, users, and, you know, threads, which is kind of our unified view for um, GitHub issues, discussions, and then soon Slack as well. And we have a notion of a workspace, uh, which is basically like where, you know, uh, Dosu can, is deployed. So uh, that could be a specific GitHub repository. It could be a Slack channel, um, other types of places in the future. Um, and then each workspace, uh, has configuration for it. So you've got high level things around like, you know, what is, how should Dosu refer to this description? Uh, who's a maintainer? So one of the things we do is like, if a user is like, needs, if Dosu doesn't know the answer and a user express, like is expressing it needs help, it'll kind of loop in um, a default maintainer. And we're kind of making this, hoping to make this more intelligent in the future in terms of routing and ownership. Um, you can configure different data sources. So, you know, in this case, it has access to the repo itself, uh, as well as the open telemetry docs. 
Um, and you can add other repositories that you might depend on, like SDKs or other sites, and soon also Slack channels, um, which I think will be really big for uh, like kind of triage or troubleshooting Slack channels, connecting those to Dosu. Um, and then you get into kind of the configuration on the issue pull request discussion basis. So on the issue side, you know, you can select what you want Dosu to auto label. Um, so kind of exactly what we showed before, um, certain things, um, you know, sometimes people like there's certain labels that Dosu, you know, might not, isn't workflow labels, like aren't things that it's best at, you know, it's like good at like content based labeling. Um, so, you know, people might exclude things like, um, you know, pending maintainer response or something like that, uh, or awaiting triage, like things that are more uh, workflow-based. Um, we have a feature for just commenting similar threads uh, or issues. So this is like, if you just want issue deduplication, you can only enable this and then Dosu will comment, um, uh, instead of like trying to answer anything, it will just comment related uh, issues or discussion and finds. And then here we have the more fine grain uh, reply settings. So you can disable this entirely. Those two will never comment on your project. Um, and then you can have who it auto replies to. So you can say it replies to everyone, everyone but maintainers, which is the most common default, and then uh, no one. So you know, requiring Dosu to explicitly be tagged for it to respond. Um, and then outside of that, we have just other kind of um, common things we've seen from open source. So we have a, Dosu, a stale bot version of Dosu. Um, it's very much, it's very similar to just traditional stale bot, a little bit more, um, I guess, engaging in that you know, users can actually interact with it if the issue is still relevant. Um, and then it'll also ping maintainers if users say it's still relevant and summarize kind of the current state of the issue, um, which people have liked from like a notification perspective. Um, and then we're hoping to make this actually more intelligent uh, over time. So like, you know, hopefully be able to do something that looks like true issue, stale, uh, stale issue detection, like this issue is no longer relevant because this code no longer exists or it was fixed in this version. So that's where we're hoping to go with that. And then encourage issue voting is just, you know, thumbs up being issue that we find that it like kind of lowers the barrier to getting more people to thumbs up important issues. Any questions on the issue configuration and I'll go through the rest which are similar. And then also I'll walk through the previews, which I mentioned before. Yeah, this, this, this is pretty great. I, I just had a question on the uh, the pull risk request aspect. Like, does Dosu also have mm -hmm. some integration with the CI? Does it, so, uh, if I don't use, uh, suppose I don't use GitHub Actions, or maybe I use Pro, or maybe some other CI, does, does it also analyze the errors in CI and kind of summarize that? Not at the moment. Uh, that's been uh, a request around like summarizing errors in CI or summarizing pull requests. Um, we're we've, right now. Oh, if I actually, it's a good segue on the pull request side. It's very much we, right now. We just do auto labeling, um, kind of, and then that's, the prow looks good to me in size labels. In the future, we might explore other things like helping summarize errors. Um, a really common request has been, you know, there are like really classic things. Um, for like maybe forgetting to sign your permits or you forgot to run linting. Those have been requests from a lot of maintainers and those who help kind of with those really low hanging things where you get to a PR and just like, actually you gotta follow the instructions. You know, this is how you fix this error in CI. So that's something that has um, come up a few times and we might support in the future, but don't have a timeline. And then um, code reviews have come up a lot. We're trying to figure out where we, where we stand on the code review side. So, uh, yeah, we don't support it currently. Um, we've experimented with it, but uh, we're trying to figure out if it's the, the right angle for Dosu there. Got it, yeah, I was gonna ask you about code reviews too. So, um, yeah. so regarding analyzing CI uh, failures, so one thing that uh, we wanted to do in the Kubernetes project is also enable a Prow plugin that can uh, analyze the CI failure in Prow and then comment back on the pull request, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the caveats that we faced, which is one of the reasons why we didn't go ahead with the approach was because uh, um, a bad actor can inject any malicious thing in the PR and then that gets reported on the pull request again 
through an official account, which was the Kubernetes bot email. But then that can be like uh, Dosu over here. So I, my question is like, is there any way for any bad actor to inject anything in one of the data sources that you uh, talked about and in turn reflect on the issue of a pull request? Yeah, I mean, security in the kind of AI LLM space is really interesting. Um, we do well, like kind of a first level um, on all inputs we get, like spam filtering, basically. Like, is this kind of like uh, malicious or like irrelevant? Um, and actually, this is kind of fun learning is by, you know, uh, being on the receiving end of you know, thousands of issues, realize there's quite a bit of spam on GitHub in a way I didn't appreciate before. Um, so yeah, so we do some level of filtering on inputs um, for like spam issue detection, um, bad or like irrelevant inputs. Beyond that, um, you know, we don't do anything like kind of, uh, I guess, yeah, like anything much beyond that, but it's been like pretty effective. Um, also like we, intentionally like have scope doses permissions within open source to not writing to um, anything but you know like it can create um kind of labels to prs and comments on issues and etc but it can actually like create prs or merge prs um, so uh, it's like write permissions and kind of a scope of what it might be able to do is limited as well Cool. Um, so yeah, so pull requests like kind of look very much the same in terms of labeling. Um, and then um, on the discussion side, okay, it's not enabled on this chart, but they look very similar to issues. Like you can select, um, you know, its reply behavior and also like which types of discussions those should respond to. Like typically QA or support is really common. And then if you go to the threads view, I think I have an example up here as well, but uh, basically this is just like a unified inbox across your repositories. And we want to do a lot more here. Um, and here, this one, here's just an example. I filtered by, you know, ones with messages, uh, preview messages from Dosu. Um, and here is, you know, an example of an issue and, Right now, we see kind of what a preview response from those who would have looked like. So in this case, I think it's a maintainer creating issue doesn't really understand uh, an off familiar with Prometheus. Um, and then you know, those who get a response of like what it would have responded if our reply was enabled. Um, and then this gives you an opportunity to leave feedback um, or what we're, what maintainers have been asking for is like the ability to like, if this does look good, just publish it directly um, to GitHub. Looks cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, it's it, yeah, it's exciting, um, and we're we're trying to do a lot more with threads. Um, like something that we've been really interested in is this idea that, like, in order for Dosu to have effective responses, we're doing a lot of work to like index issues, discussions, PRs, um, and we we're trying to figure out like what other ways can we resurface that back to the community in a useful way. Um, so like, can we, you know, make a page for a project of like all, um, kind of known issues and maybe their workarounds, um, or, uh, commonly asked questions. So we're trying to figure out like, what is like kind of like a community site that we can also get back um, based off the data that we're ingesting. Do, does it have a uh, option to kind of flag similar issues and uh, link them to each other? Yep. Yeah. So that was, let me go back. So right now the way to do that is it's a configuration on issues and discussions called comments and more threads. Um, and so like that means basically Dosu will, if it sees a new issue that's similar to other ones, it will comment, um, uh, just like a quick comment explaining that. Um, and what we want to do in the future is also bring it into like the UI itself. So um, like having kind of maybe a, a side tab here or something where we show like related issues. Hi, uh, I have a question. So like uh, how often is the 
uh, code or like the issue section uh, index, like the frequency at which it in index. So that like uh, if the board comments like uh, and there has been a change in between, like so it's not commenting or like saying uh, a, an outdated answer. So uh, for that. Yeah, it's, I mean, we re-index pretty much continuously. Um, it's, I think, it, every five minutes to be specific. Um, so it's pretty, it's very much up to date. Um, and then like when we do kind of similar issue, like searching, um, we wait by that time is like one of the ways we wait it. So we try to take that into account. And like moving forward, we want to try, I guess, along the same lines of like exposing this kind of uh, dosage knowledge as a site. Like we're trying to give more controls where maintainers or community members can be explicitly like, no, this is no longer relevant. Like have more controls on like, if dosu cites something that is incorrect, um, have a way of like, you know, maybe archiving it or explicitly downloading or downloading that data source. Uh, just one more question on that. So uh, is it a uh, way uh, is it like indexing the source code also like for some searches or like so in that case yeah. it's like just to the default brand so like people can't report issues on like some release branches uh, how about cases like that uh correct so it is on the default branch mm -hmm. um yeah multi-branch support has come up we yeah we don't support it yet it's i'm trying to figure out like the best way there mm -hmm. um so yeah it's currently um just on that we've seen some projects be kind of creative where they have like um I'm trying to remember the exact setup i think they had like a fork repository where the default branch was like a release branch and then connected those to that we've seen people do some uh, clever workarounds but it's not like it's not good right thank you um what permissions do you need to to give uh dosu uh, it's basically uh, commenting on issues and labeling them. So it's like read, write issues, uh, uh, read, write pull requests for labels and comments, uh, same thing on discussions. And that's pretty much it. Um, so just, you know, can't write code um, or make any modifications to the code base, but can comment and label things. Yeah, it looks very useful, and I like the the email feeling of all the repositories in one place. So that's pretty useful. Can you get also like some like to see like trends in any way? I mean, because like the all the information is there already, right? Yes. Yeah. No, so I mean, reporting insights is like a very very common request, and working on it. Um, yeah, we're trying to figure out like what are the most useful things to surface, but yeah, like topics, um, maybe like common pain points, things that are a higher priority as well. Um, yeah, so we're trying to figure out like what is the reporting angle there. Well, for CNCF angle, also like knowing mm -hmm. like which organizations and like the diversity of the people you're interacting with, that's also useful. True. Like a tool uh, called DevStats for every CNCF project, you check like a lot of information internally. It's like, yeah, so that's like pa part of the things that are being checked, diversity of of um, the users that are interacting, you know, maintainers and users. Yeah. Good point. So, uh, so what, what is the, sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I just wanted to ask what's on the roadmap of this. Yeah. Yeah, I would say on the roadmap is really um, like a so immediate one is kind of just being able to publish from here. Um, uh, and then kind of longer term is this, I guess, community site knowledge base. Um, we think like basically giving people, um, yeah, not just like, one of the, the nice things about Dosu is that it helps organize your information. And so how do we give that back to communities um, and then like make it really nicely well-structured for people to um, uh, like uh, maybe interact and like kind of, we like people help, help people make Dosu better, you know, by getting insight into its knowledge um, and, and then being able to like kind of modify it. So, yeah. 
Do you have like a project board or something like that on GitHub where you track uh, stuff like that? Uh, sort of. Uh, we have a GitHub discussions. It's not really used. We've had a few people create issues, but yeah, I'm going to hopefully have the roadmap be more public soon. I'm trying to get it organized first internally. Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, uh, how many people yeah. are you? Uh, over eight people in all. So it feels, you know, sizable, uh, but still very small. Um, yeah. No, cool. Like it would be great, like to see what you're up to, like uh, once you you get it more public, because it actually looks very exciting, very useful. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, what's kind of the the installation process or enabling this in in a a new project if someone wanted to adopt this? Yeah. So if you want to adopt it, you can create an account. You'll end up in the app. Um, if you go to create a new workspace, also just mention CNCF typically in the survey and we'll make sure to like, there's technically a wait list right now. We're hoping to get rid of it soon. Um, but, um, just mention the CNCF prioritize just taking you off quickly. You come in here, uh, to create a new workspace. Um, if it's your first time going in, you'll have to install the, um, Dosu GitHub app, which will take you to a screen like this. Um, you install it on whatever repository you want Dosu to have access to. So that's either reading it as a data source or being active on it as a, like a workspace. Um, and one thing that's important to call out is installing the app does not do anything user facing. Um, so you can install it and not have any concerns. Once you do install it, um, you'll be able to uh, create a uh, like workspace that looks like something like this, where you say, you know, the settings that you want um, whether that is like, hey, like one way we see sometimes people want to start, you just set it up, disable everything, um, and then you'll get to see previews. And just like, that's like a way to get a feel for it. Uh, or maybe you start with auto labeling, um, depending on kind of preferences. And that's it. Sure. Cool. Um, where, where do you host this, by the way? Uh, um, in terms of like, I mean, on GCP to be very specific. Okay. So uh, yeah, right. Just this is, it's a SAS portal basically. So you have yeah. to, you have to log in here and then presumably you have, there's a backend service that you guys have to run. Um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Do you, what's your, do you see any issues there long, long-term? Does this get super popular? <laughs> um, what's your kind of uh, long, longevity plan for um, running this infrastructure? Yeah, I mean, so the big thing for us is, um, you know, making Dosu into a sustainable business so we can also, you know, continue to serve open source um, in this manner. And so uh, we're very actively, you know, like we work with enterprises as well. So something that's been kind of fun and uh, that we've learned is like uh, big platform teams internally like function very much like open source projects, larger enterprises uh, where you have services that other engineers depend on. Those services change. People are, you know, have questions or run into issues with them. Uh, and so Dosu has been uh, fairly popular with like internal uh, engineering teams. So we're hoping that uh, the, you know, I guess on the enterprise side can help support the open source side either like indirectly just by, you know, like kind of helping, you know, just based off revenue or like directly where enterprises depend on open source projects, those who has access and knowledge about those open source projects, how can we um, kind of have some sort of sponsorship um, kind of payment structure there, but still figuring that out. Gotcha. Okay. So you'll have a enterprise paid option and then a um, open source available uh, uh, for, for like for no charge probably for open source projects yeah yeah uh, to a usage limit uh, like right now it's like 500 requests which is and the CSF can go over that but um, it's you know, that covers 90% open source projects okay cool. how do you log in to, to get to the UI here uh, so if you go I just log out yeah, so if you go to app.dosu.dev, uh, you can log in. And then you'll get 
taken to like just a kind of onboarding form and then you should be good to go. So it's attached to the GitHub user? Yeah. Do you have any any like information that you say, save about the users or? Um, it, so, I mean, like we have, it's all kind of in our, you know, privacy policy, um, which was reviewed by the CNCF as well, but I mean, it's mostly analytics. So, you know, like how you're using the app. So we have some insight, um, that's pretty much it. And then we have like your GitHub username, um, your name that you enter in the survey. Um, and that's more or less it. Yeah. You, you know, about the European law, so yeah. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's fun. It's even more fun than the California one. <laughs> yes, GDPR. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Yeah. How long have you been around? Um, so just over a year. So we like I launched the app. I just get about by last beginning of uh, July last year. Um, and so, and yeah, we've grown quite a bit. Like, obviously, it's sort of just as me, we're now a team of eight. Um, and as we've raised money, so we're going to be around for another few years. And then, uh, you know, our install base has grown a ton. Like, Dose has installed on like 20,000 open source projects, which is really cool. Um, granted, you know, like open source, there's a long tail. So, you know, I'd say, you know, most of those are just side projects. Um, or random forks, um, but you know, on quite a few uh, projects in the CNCF and ASF, and hopefully other foundations coming soon. Hmm. Is that a serious A or just a seed? Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, it's technically a seed round. Um, uh, you know, we haven't like formally announced it, but. Uh, kind of we've raised a total of um, just over nine million. So, yeah, pretty nice. <laughs> the, for eight people, it's a long run. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and like we really do want to like make Dosu just like a you know uh, like a no brainer tool for open source communities. Um, I think that it's like really you know what we're trying to get it to. So we're really open to feedback. Um, ideas, anything that we can do to help support. Um, I think, yeah, like I think there's a lot of people tackling kind of maintainer burnout from a compensation perspective, and we're really exciting about it from like a tooling perspective and like the things that are really time consuming as a maintainer that you no longer have to do because, you know, automation can help. So, so it's reverse pseudo? Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Awesome. Uh, so thanks, thanks, Tim, for presenting uh, and walking us through this. Uh, this this is very impressive. Uh, as a next step, we'll probably install this for Tag Runtime repository, uh, and have some sort of a uh, a one on one page, right? Like that other projects in CNCF can use to set it up. Uh, so First of all, like, is there some sort of documentation that other projects have come up with available? Are you aware of that that we can use, or do we? Or I mean, I'm just happy to you know start something with CNCF repositories as well. Yeah, we have a. We're about to redo our documentation. Hopefully, it'll be done tomorrow or Monday, um, so I can update the link. But we have like some very basic docs right now um, that I can share. It's in yeah. I'll put on on the meeting doc. Um, but otherwise I can help write something up as well, but the new documentation site, I'm pretty sure will have like set up instructions and should be done very soon. So. And just like last curiosity question, like what's the mm -hmm. AI model behind it? Uh, so we use a combination of models. Um, it's part of the reason that right now, like goes to is not self-host self-serve is like the landscape's changing so much. Um, and, and in order to like ensure a level of quality of experience, we want to have that control until things maybe stabilize a bit. So we use um, uh, both OpenAI and like other model providers 
and then our, you know, I think open source models have finally gotten to a point where they're actually comparable. So we're really excited about plugging those in as well. And, and how do you how do you handle uh, the data authenticity, fine tunings, and things like that? Um, so we like right now the way we, we don't do fine tuning as of this moment. Um, we're very like I'm very bullish without getting too many details into like in context learning. So basically, like now that uh, a lot of these models have really long context windows, you can give it a lot of examples of like what is good or correct for this repo or um, GitHub organization to get something similar to fine tuning without actually having to do model management. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of um, uh, the way we're approaching it right now. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, one last parting question is like, do you intend to open source any aspects of Dosu app? Yes, at some point, uh, trying to figure that out. Um, obviously come from an open source background and like really want to give back. Um, we're trying to figure out, like, we have, we have a lot of ideas, um, and we're trying to figure out, like, what parts of Dosu make sense to open source, um, and, uh, yeah, so more to come there, figuring it out, but it's definitely a lot. Well, cool. Very cool. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, that was great. Um, Thanks. Um, All right.